Hello, good morning, everybody, to our Job to be Done webinar and introductory session into Job to be Done and Outcome Driven Innovation. I'm very happy to have you all here in the webinar today. Um, and I also would like to introduce um, Karl Heinz, uh, Karl Heinz Meyer from Eaton. You can also see him on the screen here. Um, and Karl Heinz will run into his um, introductory um, in a few minutes. Um, let me go ahead with uh, a short overview of the agenda while having a small uh, sip of coffee. Um, for everybody, I hope you also have a coffee on your table. Um, what we want to do today is uh, we will have a short overview of what is Jobs to be done theory. Uh, we will then go into the approach and highlight how it can be applied in practice. Um, and we use the outcome driven innovation framework for that, which has five steps. Now we will run through each of these five steps uh, based on a real case example from Eaton Industries, that's uh, electrical industry. Uh, and uh, it's a very, um, it's a B2B example, uh, but we will really run through that and um, introduce you uh, on how it is being applied in practice. Uh, we will then sum up um, uh, the presentation uh, with a short outlook here of the Job to be Done Institute Europe, uh, which is an uh, educational um, organization, part of Edison uh, Consulting. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead with it. Um, the objectives are to give you an introductory and of course to run through the, um, through the case. Now, let me start with a little bit of an interactive uh, uh, element in our presentation. The poll question uh, that we have provided here. Question is, do you have experience with job to be done um, and ODI uh, so far? And um, I would like to have a short click from you uh, so we can see uh, kind of the background of the audience. And you can all see that and uh, we can share it together. Um, Okay, just click on it and tell us if you have experience with job to be done and ODI or just with job to be done or if you don't have any experience uh, so far. Now, the reason is uh, we can see that there are 39% uh, of people having experience with both, 23% um, um, have no experience with job to be done and ODI and uh, some of you have experience with job to be done but not ODI. Okay, now to, um, to, to uh, bring this in a, into a perspective, job to be done in our understanding is um, the theory, the philosophy and ODI is um, an operational framework on how to apply job to be done um, in an organization and in practice. Now, we are really looking forward to guiding you through that. Um, give me a chance to also introduce our organization, Edison. Uh, here you can see a most recent photo of our team. Mm, we are a consulting company and we are focused on uh, creating growth strategies that deliver success, hopefully. And we do this based on uh, a very uh, close insight into customer needs. And that's more or less what we do. Um, there are typically five questions to answer when it comes to a growth strategy. And, um, and the, these are the typical questions that, that we also answer in our projects together with our clients. The first question is, what opportunities exist for value creation in a market? So, yeah, is there any opportunity to create more value? The second question, how should you position your existing products? It's not always about creating new stuff. Sometimes it's enough to better position what you already have, have on the plate um, in a way that reflects to the uh, value expectations of your customers. The third question then, how should you improve existing products in those areas where uh, probably you can create more value with improved products uh, and we want to better understand exactly what that is and what to improve on existing products. The fourth question then runs into the portfolio perspective. So what new offerings are needed to fill potential gaps in an existing product and service portfolio? 
And finally, what the long-term strategy should be um, to get the entire job done. Now, and this uh, really runs into more radical perspectives. Um, if you want to get a whole job done for a customer, typically um, an existing solution is always a piece of a puzzle in such a job from a customer's point of view. And this really opens up uh, a new horizon for innovation to create totally new stuff and um, to create um, delivery platforms that get a whole job done for a customer. How are we doing this? Um, there's a lot of literature around. I would like to uh, recommend these two books here, um, What Customers Want uh, from 2005, um, written by Tony Alvig and Jobs to be Done, the most recent one from Tony, um, which you can also have as a free audio book and a free ebook um, via our website. And uh, there you can also find a lot of other um, uh, sources of literature uh, that you are uh, invited to have a look at. Now, what we will do today is give you a summary of all of that uh, in the next uh, kind of 50 minutes. Now, let me start with uh, what is innovation? Can I go ahead? That's the next slide. Oh, that works. Okay. Innovation, a very simple, a very simple definition here, I have to admit, uh, but very crisp. So innovation is a solution for a need. And uh, what we want to achieve in a corporate organization is to come up with innovations um, in kind of a process. So you do not want to have one innovation at a time. What you want to have is a number of innovation that come up um, all the time. Okay, I see that there are some, some people uh, say that they cannot hear any voice. I'm not sure if this is um, the case for many of you. If, if, if that would be the case, please just give us a short, um, a short comment. Uh, otherwise, uh, maybe you can just try to reset your audio, audio settings. Um, now, how can, we, uh, how can we come up with um, innovation uh, in, in, in a process format? What we, what we need to know is not only the needs, we do not need to know all the needs that are there, we also need to know which of those needs are relevant and not very well served. So if we have this kind of information, what relevant needs are out there in the market and how well they are served already, we can already much better understand where to focus on with the creation of solutions. And on the solution level, of course, then we need to make sure that they totally address the unmet needs and um, in, a, in, a, in a technically and economically feasible way. Now, that's the equation that we have to resolve and uh, the outcome-driven innovation framework and the jobs to be done philosophy really gives us a very good guidance uh, through that. Okay, now typically there isn't agreement on what the need is and what inputs make innovation predictable. And I would like to go a little bit into this uh, discussion here. Um, typically needs um, have different, different um, uh, kind of definitions. Uh, ask your colleagues um, in a coffee break what uh, needs they know in the market, in your market, and you will see a lot of different um, language and a lot of different um, ways to define a customer need. It can be uh, requirements, delighters, wishes, features, wants, must-haves, and you name it. You can see uh, some examples here on the slide. Now, if we don't have the same language on what the need is, if you don't have the same understanding how a need is being defined, uh, the whole process already starts um, kind of wrongly or not um, uh, in, a, in, a, in, in a yeah not in a in a structured in a structured way. And th therefore, we need to come up with needs uh, that are not a moving target, that are stable over time, uh, and that are defined um, universally. 
uh, in an organization. So everybody needs to have the same understanding what a need is. And then of course also how relevant each of those needs is in the market so that everybody can bring in, in their solution competences to come up with better solutions. So that's kind of very logic here. Um, what are we using um, to work on this is um, jobs to be done thinking. And you can see this uh, quote from Tier to Levitt on this slide. People don't want a quarter inch drill, they want a quarter inch hole. Uh, that, this really highlights our way of thinking. Uh, so we um, are interested in understanding what people want to achieve. So when they use a drill, when they use a solution, what is it that they want to achieve? Is it that they want to have a hole in the, in the wall? Is it that they want to hang a picture? Is it that they want to decorate the office? Is it that they want to, you know, like you can go ahead with this. Is it that they want to be happy in their life? Uh, and this already shows you the, the way of um, uh, kind of discussion that you run into. Um, and there's a certain um, trigger that I want to share with you that you should use when you dis define um, the job to be done that you want to analyze. It should be on a, on a certain level of abstraction that goes beyond your existing solutions. So we probably don't want to look at uh, the hole in the wall uh, as such because this is pretty much related to the drill. Maybe we want to go a little bit higher on that, uh, like complete an ins installation work on a construction site, um, but not too high, like people making people happy. Because you as a solution provider, as a drill manufacturer, for example, you have certain capabilities and you can definitely go beyond creating a drill, but probably not uh, that far that you help people decorate their offices or getting more happy in their lives. So uh, this is also to, always to be considered when you come up with job definitions that you define the job on the right level of abstraction um, in a way that um, it uh, can be fulfilled um, when you look at the whole job to be done with the capabilities of your organization or with planned future capabilities of your organization to really go for a larger stretch in thinking. Now, this um, is a, can open a big um, kind of discussion and that's typically the discussion that we have always in the beginning of our cooperation with our clients on finding the right level of abstraction and the right job definition. Now, what's the consequence of this? Um, you have a different look at markets. Now, what you can see here, this example shows you a market that is really product uh, defined. So you can see four different, if you like, four different types of product-based market, the LP market, the CD market, up to the streaming market. Uh, such a product-based market definition is not helpful when you really want to come up with new stuff and you want to come up with new solutions, because um, in such a case, you would just analyze the product that you already know um, and uh, not looking at the underlying job to be done which in this case is, and many of you will already know that example, um, uh, as it is, uh, <laughs> as we communicated this, uh, this a lot. Um, in that case, and I really like the example, that's why I use it all the time. If the market is um, listen to music when you look at it from a job perspective, from a job to be done perspective. So people don't want to have an LP or a CD, they want to listen to music, that's the job. and that is rather stable over time. Um, and when you really know all the needs related to listen to music, this will be then the desired outcomes and we will go into that. Um, then you know what, where to innovate and what to improve. And these needs are pretty much stable over time. They have been here for a hundred years now and most probably people want to listen to music also in the future. Um, what will change definitely is the solutions and the technologies but not the underlying job to be done. That's the level of abstraction that we want to go for when it comes to innovation. So how can you um, align this in your organization? Um, how is, is, is it to be understood um, in, a, in, a, in a process framework of innovation? What you can see is a schematic example of a, a stage gate process. And uh, we typically understand two areas of the innovation process. The first part of the process, the fr very front end of the innovation process is where you want to understand needs, where you want to segment the market according to the needs 
and they want to come up with a product and uh, service strategy. And based on that, you then go into the development, the validation and the launch part of the innovation process. And uh, typically we see um, a very strong um, uh, foothold of job to be done and ODI in the early area, in the early stage of the innovation process, while in the later stages of the innovation process, there are pretty much um, frameworks and methodologies to, to fast uh, and focused uh, to come up with solutions very fast and very focused, like uh, lean and agile development approaches and design thinking approaches. Design thinking plays together with uh, job to be done and ODI pretty well. Um, and um, I will also highlight this then later on in the presentation. Now, this was really about um, uh, theoretical, um, uh, some theoretical viewpoints here. Um, to sum, sum, sum this up, um, what can you do with it? Yeah, find under and overserved segments, um, understand what your products are strong in at the moment, what weaknesses you have, how you position, should position your offerings, how to improve them, what new offerings are needed. Is a new platform needed? What about the customer journey that can also be analyzed with job to be done approach? Um, what about emotions, emotional jobs, willingness to pay um, up to investment opportunities, finding uh, R&D and M&A investment opportunities, and reducing the, the risk um, in investing into new stuff. Uh, now, here would be the next poll question. What is uh, the challenges uh, that you have? What are the most important challenges um, that uh, you want to use job to be done and ODI for? And you can click on multiple items here and let us see um, where you come from and what your, um, what your viewpoints are on this. Uh, just to have this uh, small interactive element um, again here. Now I see um, the quotes are going up. Very fast quoting. Uh, if you could do political elections like this, probably this will happen also in the future, that people will vote uh, in an online format and have the results even faster than we typically have it today when it comes to uh, polls. Okay, now I see there's already uh, four quarters have already gave us their quote. Now let's share it with everybody um, and uh, see what came out, out here. Now we have uh, find and select markets for growth. The biggest one is uncover customer needs, quantify customer needs, also very important, uh, hidden segments of opportunity. I think um, this is um, what we will cover also in the next few minutes. And uh, we will go into now finding and selecting markets for growth and then uncovering customer needs and spend some time on this now. Um, now this would uh, lead me over now to Karl Heinz, um, uh, Karl Heinz Meyer of uh, Eaton Industries, uh, located in Austria. Karl Heinz, maybe you can give us a short introduction to you and um, Eaton, and specifically the challenge that you had uh, on the table uh, and that you have been working on together with us, with Job to Be Done and ODI. Okay. Okay, so thank you very much, Martin. So uh, as um, as I mentioned, my name is Karl Heinz Meyer. I am responsible inside our organization for the solution division for innovation, uh, coaching standards, regulation, and program management. And uh, my organization in the mayor is uh, mainly uh, responsible for uh, the part of solution. So maybe we can already move over to the next one. Uh, Eaton, and I work for Eaton uh, since 2010, so uh, Eaton acquired Möller at that time, and I was uh, part of a uh, Yes, um, this was the Eaton introduction, uh, uh, enterprise, uh, worldwide acting company, as I mentioned it, with the sec uh, different sectors, and I'm working for the electrical sector, and uh, our challenge uh, at that time, uh, it's already some time ago, was really uh, the search protection uh, solution we had at that time and uh, the product class uh, we identified uh, had attractive margins but uh, we were very low. So, uh, it was a search protection solution 
uh, we had uh, to do a border class with very attractive margins and uh, small market shares at the time. And uh, we were uh, under pressure from our competitors for sure uh, on, on prices as well on, on the market. And we were searching for a different uh, differentiation from our competition. And here we uh, thought, okay, this uh, ODI and top to be done thinking uh, is maybe a good method. And we tried it uh, for the first time uh, on that uh, to find out uh, the job for our electricians and uh, where we see our suffering and what we can do better. Okay. Yeah, can I move on? So then, um, uh, Karl Heinz, thank you for this introductory to the challenge. I would like to use the opportunity now and uh, guide uh, the audience to these five steps that we um, have been running through them based on that challenge. So first step in that uh, approach, and now we really talk about outcome-driven innovation and the practical approach, is uh, that, we, uh, that we first of all start with uh, defining the market, um, uh, which is a definition of the target group, who is the job executor that we want to create value for. Um, and you already mentioned that, it's the electricians. Um, and what is the job to be done? And it is, um, um, I will come to the job later on. Now, once we know the job to be done, we then want to, in the second step, um, go into all the details of the job and understand all the needs, all the desired outcomes that are related to this job to be done, that are bound to the job to be done, as we call it, and these are metrics. And we will have a look at these outcome, outcome statements then as well. Uh, once we know all the needs related to a job, once we know all the outcomes related to a job to be done, we can then in the third step go into a quantification, uh, do a questionnaire, give this questionnaire out to uh, the target group, in that case the electricians, and ask them for each of those needs, how relevant each of it is, how relevant each of these outcomes is, and how well is it served with existing solutions. Once we have that data in place, we can, in the fourth step, dig into the data and do a, a real data analysis and find out if there are any kind of hidden um, segments in the market. That means segments of people who have different needs profiles. Um, that is really done on a statistical basis, and I will highlight this as well. Um, in the fifth step, uh, we use all the input, like the qualitative insights from step one and two, and the quantitative insights from steps three and four, uh, to really come up with a, with, a, with a winning growth strategy, as we call it, precisely to come up with a product strategy and the market, a go-to-market strategy. Now, let us go into the details of this and uh, start off with step number one. Uh, and here we want to uh, go ahead um, and I would like to highlight what a market is. Uh, as already shown before in the listen to music example, a market is a group of people and the job they are trying to get done. Um, um, be aware that there is no solution and no product mentioned in a market definition. Um, and um, to highlight this with the music example, this would be, for example, music enthusiasts that want to listen to music. If that would be uh, the large target group, if in the music market you would be interested in certain uh, groups of people that you want to create value for, like sports people or teenagers or students, you might come up with this kind of more uh, restricted uh, target group definitions. Uh, but that's it. That's the way of discussion that you should have when you define a market job base. So who is the group of people that you want to create value for and what is the job to be done that you want to create value for? Now, and this was the um, approach that we had um, here with, with Eaton and um, uh, Karl Heinz, maybe you want to give us uh, five cents on that. Yeah, it was, uh, I think, uh, simply that uh, the group of people were for electricians and uh, the job we wanted to identify, specify a search protection solution uh, for everybody. And uh, it's not more or less as, as that. Okay. Thank you very much, Karl Heinz. Then I, I go ahead um, and 
Of course, this um, is a discussion in the beginning of a, of, of a project. And uh, sometimes you also want to validate this decision on what the job is um, and who really the target group is. Um, and this can be done by a little bit of a pre-research. This can be done by, you know, talking to a few electricians, asking them uh, what it is that they want to get done with a certain product or when they use a certain product and, and, and listen in and see how they define uh, their job to be done. And that's a very important um, validation step also. So you should not come up with just a, uh, an assumed job definition and say, okay, that's it, let's go ahead with it but also to really talk to people uh, and see how they frame their job to be done. Um, okay, now let's go ahead with the next step here. Of course, for all of these things, you can have a lengthy discussion for each of these steps. What we wanna <laughs> provide here is to give you really a, a short condensed overview of everything. Um, and of course, then also invite you to have further discussions on details that you might want to listen in if there should be something that you would be interested especially now still within the webinar please drop us uh, a, a chat message put in a question that you that you have and probably we can still address it within uh, within the webinar if it fits now second uh, step uncover the customer's needs tied to the job to be done uh, now we really want to understand that and uh, i have here um, a full picture of all the needs that we consider in our job to be done needs framework. Basically, it's five um, categories of needs. The first category, and this is um, what we will go into more detail now in the next minutes then, is the core functional job, like specify a search protection solution uh, as the core job. And here we want to understand all the outcomes related to it. Um, now, uh, there are also other jobs, of course, and these other jobs, uh, they come up based on um, a discussion of the core functional job. So if you talk to an electrician and you talk to them uh, about um, specifying a search protection solution, you also want to understand what other jobs they want to get done when they do that. So you want to derive information about related jobs based on a core functional job that you um, that you start with. Now, this would be then related jobs that people want to get done while they specify a search protection solution. And if you know about those related jobs, uh, you can think about creating new solutions, new services, probably uh, to help people get a related and related jobs that people want to get done while they specify a search protection solution. And if you know about those related jobs, uh, you can think about creating new solutions, new services, probably uh, to help people get a related job done. I think everybody can hear me, but uh, we lost Martin. Maybe I can take it on from here uh, on. Uh, job map for listening to mus music. I think uh, it's uh, more or less, uh, he mentioned it already, and uh, define, uh, uh, locate, prepare, confirm, uh, conclude, modify, monitor. I think uh, that's something uh, you heard already. And uh, let's move on here. Uh, product evolve over time to get the entire job done on a single platform. And that's really the new approach with this job to be done thinking. Um, knowing what the entire job is at, the long-term mission and accelerates progress, this is also something uh, which is part uh, of of, uh, of of that. And to be honest, uh, for me, it's always uh, the question uh, why, why we are doing that, why we are putting a, a, a hole in the wall, right? Uh, do we need uh, a, a drilling machine? And uh, more is uh, more wise, uh, and uh, you are asking, So I get some chats uh, that uh, somebody think you can hear me, I understood, uh, but we lost Martin on that. And there's uh, more, uh, I, I tried, I tried to take it over. And uh, what I wanted to say is, is more wise you are asking is more uh, in, on, on a, a different view you get. yeah. Because then you uh, ask also, why do you need uh, a hole uh, in a wall? And uh, the, uh, the answer could be, okay, I need to mount something. And uh, then, okay, you think of, okay, 
maybe you can already do it a bit different uh, on uh, on uh, mounting something on the wall. And then you maybe see already if it uh, maybe a drilling machine is not necessary. And that's really the core of, of, of uh, that job here uh, to move on. And uh, maybe I can jump in, in my topics here. So the different steps and already redo something. So on, um, I think, can you, can you see uh, the, the line, uh, the, the pages, the slides? Maybe one hint that you can see it. Yeah, fine, uh, good. So I, I, I took some steps over. You you can anyway maybe uh, follow on or maybe it's anyway repeated later on. But the, the main point uh, is uh, that uh, at the end of the day, uh, with all these outcomes you get from such jobs, uh, you uh, get uh, a so-called opportunity landscape. And this is, I think, the main core for me. So you can see uh, here uh, on the left side, uh, how is this satisfaction done? And on the uh, x uh, axis, uh, how is uh, it? Uh, what's the importance uh, for you of that job or of that outcome? And if you uh, identify here, uh, then these different uh, different views uh, you get at the end of the day, uh, the different areas. Yeah, you can see. So this right area, where the, uh, it, it's highly satisfied, but it's not so important. It's maybe oversurfing something. Yeah. And uh, if you uh, go on the right uh, bottom edge, where it's uh, very important, uh, but it's not maybe uh, highly satisfied, you come to an area where you should focus on. And uh, that's uh, also very important, that maybe some of the features you have are not really important for your customers, but some features uh, you are looking for you don't have are very important, and maybe you have to, uh, and you want to exchange it. Uh, so at, at the end of the day, uh, you get uh, such uh, landscape with the outcomes and you can see, okay, this uh, left uh, edge uh, is overserved and uh, this right edge is underserved. And uh, where you should really focus on is uh, the, the table stakes uh, on the bottom and the underserved meat. And that's really something you never get uh, with an, uh, another met method. It's more or less uh, a method really to do a syst systemic, uh, systematic innovation. And that's really something which is uh, very, very, very important. So I understood that uh, Martin's PC needs to be um, needs to be started uh, new. So anyway, I move on here. Uh, quantifying needs uh, for electricians. You see, uh, we have one hundred one electricians in Austria and in Germany. Uh, we have uh, some samples of uh, electrician in, in the firm size and population electricians in countries. We, we did the poll in Austria and in Germany, uh, prioritization of uh, 124 needs at the end of the day, uh, additional profile questions, uh, calculations, and the research time was more or less uh, six weeks. Uh, we, we did and uh, we moved on. And uh, maybe I focus already here on, on our uh, results. You can see that uh, we were really uh, already on the top edge, but uh, nevertheless, uh, we found also some uh, uh, obviously overserved needs, but also a lot of underserved needs uh, in, in that area. And here are on the right side some examples of that. Uh, minimize the time it takes to determine sources of inductive voltage. Uh, minimize the likelihood of falling uh, to a uh, failing, sorry, failing to establish surge protection due to limited space and uh, minimize the likelihood of lacking information about the technical parameters of the photovoltaic system and uh, minimize the likelihood of selection search protection device that doesn't fit uh, the preview. So uh, to establish a search protection solution for electricians, it's, it's uh, very complicated. It's not like uh, you place an MCB uh, in a distribution board. Uh, you have to do a lot of investigations. You have to think about the complete setup. You have to do some calculations. You have to think about the lines in between a B-type uh, search protection device and the C-type search protection device. And this uh, made it very complicated. Also, the standards you have to fulfill uh, was very, very complex. And uh, this was uh, the reason, anyway, why we tried to find out how we can help and what uh, what can be done on that as well. So, uh, and in addition to this uh, opportunity landscape, you get also out of these different steps, uh, we found out uh, access initial situation for the search protection solution 
gather requirements and so on. And for each of these steps or core jobs, during the phase uh, an electrician has to do, we get uh, for each of them uh, some outcomes. And uh, here you can see we are out of these outcomes, we saw, okay, already a uh, fair opportunity. Yeah? For the bond, it's uh, not so high, but anyway, we found some outcomes. For the two, we had higher outcomes here, you can see the three uh, yeah. outcomes where we have to focus on, the four uh, we have to focus on uh, as well. Yeah, and uh, I think we got Martin back, isn't it? Yeah. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, now no, I'm back. <laughs> Something back happened again. here. Yeah, anyway, so Martin, I, well, I, I, I took it over a bit. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, not to wait. Uh, so uh, I am already on, on my slides uh, with the core jobs. And uh, step five, uh, modify a uh, SP solution. You can see here we didn't find really opportunities where we should follow. But it's also important and also a good result in step six uh, 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 on the documentation for the search collection uh, solution because also at least one one outcome we uh, uh, would have to follow. So Martin, okay, you're back. Great. So, uh, I'm I'm already on slide uh, 46, so um, I left I some, some slides. Uh, maybe you would take it over now once again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Karl Heinz. Uh, thank you for stepping in. Um, I think uh, uh, you brought um, uh, all the relevant parts um, anyway now. Um, what you what you uh, were showing was the job map and the outcomes uh, and uh, then also the quantification. Um, and what we have here now is uh, the recite of the study. So um, we, were, we were asking for 124 needs. Um, and we were asking a representative sample of electricians uh, on that. Uh, and what you can see here is this opportunity landscape uh, showing that there are some opportunities, some solid opportunities uh, in that market um, of specifying a search protection solution. And uh, they are in the dark gray area. And then you also see some a little bit overserved needs in the, in the, in the light area. Uh, needs that are not so um, not so relevant and already pretty much um, uh, resolved. Uh, do you do you want to highlight some of the outcomes, the top core job opportunities, uh, Karl Heinz? No, it's, anyway, I went already through that, uh, and maybe finally at our solutions we did. I can highlight it anyway. What what we did? Oh, okay, so fine. Main, main sector, yeah. Thanks a lot. Then I jump over to the next step in the process, which is the segmentation. Now, once you have all this data in place, uh, you can go in and find out if there are different segments of opportunity. Um, and this is a schematic example here. Uh, we cannot share everything out of the Eaton project, uh, but uh, as a schematic example, it works like this. Uh, that you do a factor and a cluster analysis mm -hmm. of all the uh, statistical data that you got in from the questionnaires. Um, and by doing so, you find out um, different segments of customers with different needs profiles. In this example here, on this uh, picture here, uh, you can see that 33% of all the customers uh, had this answering pattern of the, of the violet uh, dots. So these are all the needs answered by these 33 percent of customers, and these 33 percent of customers on the right hand side, they are pretty much challenged in getting the job done and not very well satisfied. While on the other hand, you can see in that example also a group of customers that is 15 percent of all the customers that had a totally different answering pattern, and they were answering all the needs in a way that you can see in this uh, in these red dots. So this is a group of customers that um, uh, have that give not any relevance to all of these needs, and they are pretty much satisfied in getting the job done. And then you have two other segments kind of in between. So when you know this uh, true market segmentation, it's needs-based market segmentation, you can build upon that insight 
um, a, a, a pretty a pretty focused product strategy and go to market strategy. So to position existing products uh, accordingly, and then also uh, to challenge your existing solution portfolio, um, and finally come up with uh, innovation initiatives that, for example, get these uh, unmet needs. Um, solved way better for this 33% of uh, customers that are totally underserved. While on the other hand, you probably need to consider a disruptive solution, making uh, a solution way cheaper and way less performant for this 15% of overserved customers on the very uh, left hand side. And that is what I wanted to share when it comes to uh, market segmentation. Now, let's go ahead uh, to the next step, the final step, number five, how to use the, these insights and how to use this data to really come up with something on the streets. First of all, the data model that you receive out of an ODI um, uh, study um, is really super comprehensive. So you get uh, typically a hundred questions uh, in the questionnaire, all the needs that you found you, you analyze here, plus profile criteria uh, and so on. So you can, um, it's, it's a really profound and deep dive uh, market data that you get out of this questionnaire. Uh, and when you have that, uh, you put it this in, into a table uh, format, and that's an Excel table that you get out of this, of this tool. And that uh, will show you then the highest opportunities in, uh, in, in the market. And this is uh, highlighted here in that slide. So you can see on the left hand side, jobs and outcomes, minimize the time it takes to minimize the likelihood and so on. And you see the importance score, the satisfaction score of each of those needs and the combined opportunity score. And uh, you can uh, have a look at these opportunities top down. Uh, no, the discussion should be within your team. Uh, is that opportunity in the market something that we want to address as a company? Does the firm intend to address this need now or in the future with new products and services? Yes or no? And this is something that you can discuss here based on hard data. You exactly know how the opportunity score is and you can then uh, map this out against your competencies and capabilities as an organization and discuss if you want to uh, work on addressing that need or if you on purpose not uh, want to work on that specific need. Uh, and as we are totally needs driven and not solution driven, you can have a pretty much uh, a good discussion on that because now the solution uh, perspective only comes into place. Uh, second of all, when you decide you want to go for it, you want to uh, address a need, you should then have a discussion, would an, an, an improvement of existing products and services be sufficient on this? Can we just work incrementally or improve stuff that we already have? Or would that not be sufficient so that we are forced to really come up with uh, a totally new solution, a totally new product or a new delivery platform, depending on the business that you're in? Um, and uh, the, these needs uh, and opportunities will guide you in that kind of discussion. So that's a really hardcore strategy discussion that is super precise and super structured based on the true customer needs and the, um, and the uh, validated and scored um, opportunities. Um, and um, this was done uh, also with you, Carl Heinz, and with your team at Eaton. And maybe you want to highlight the results and what came out of it at the end um, uh, of the process. So I jump over to the next slide. Please go ahead and, um, and, and give us your results. So thank you very much, Martin. So there is some discussion in regards of the sound. To be honest, at least on my end, uh, Martin is very loud and clear. I can uh, really hear him. Hopefully, <coughs> hopefully you can hear me as well. So. There were some questions in the chat, as I saw. Uh, the survey uh, we did uh, was more or less uh, telephone interviews, uh, the majority we did. Survey monkey and stuff like that uh, wasn't really, uh, uh, wasn't really um, yeah, applicable at that time. So we did really telephone interviews. Yeah, and uh, finally, all, all, all the discussions on the outcomes, on the jobs uh, we had, uh, led us, to be honest, really to something which is really uh, plug and play. So if we 
the majority of the issues an electrician had and has is really calculating something, thinking about that, and that's not what he wants to do. So what we did, uh, we launched a single model T1 and T2 combined surge arrestor with an E-imp of 12.5 kiloamp, uh, 10 slash 350. All uh, uh, guys who are familiar with this, uh, this is really lightning uh, behavior, 10 um, microseconds slash 350, and the huge energy. <clears throat> and we got really a product uh, on the market which uh, never, uh, we, nobody saw on the market before. So it's actually level 1.5 kiloamp, and this was uh, the main core of our solution out of all these uh, discussions we found out. And uh, so the, the, the jobs and, and the outcomes uh, were really uh, uh, served and we had really a huge uh, success as well. So then uh, let's move on on the next steps. So it was not the, it was not the only thing we did. Uh, we did also uh, the uh, 12350 with 25 kiloamp in two models, uh, class one and two at that time. I think it's a lot of details in, and uh, we did uh, pre-built boards for Germany uh, that we have already in in buyers that I can take it as it is, and that's really the, the main uh, the main the main topic behind. Yeah, uh, maybe uh, also on the next one. So you can see it's uh, a, a huge program we did uh, uh, out of that. Also T2 and T3. That's that's really specific uh, search protection devices. Uh, with bus bars in addition to help the electrician really uh, to to be faster and to minimize the time uh, he has to do on uh, wiring. Uh, the uh, nice thing really is uh, at the end of the day here here we go as well uh, on a photovoltaic one. Uh, this was one of the solutions you can see. It's really a huge program we invented and we performed uh, out of uh, that results. And the good news is really we did this uh, survey and all these investigations already years ago. And uh, as I mentioned it, uh, it's uh, lasting a, a long time. And you can see uh, the launch of season marketing campaign was performed uh, mid of last year. So whatever you get out, it's not something which is only for uh, a single month, a single year. So for sure we had to prioritize and uh, we had to do it uh, step by step according to the resources. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, really, uh, we had a base uh, for the development and for R&D for a long time. And that's really also a huge advantage out of that. So we are not really uh, dependable on, on, on product management uh, that they invent each year a new program, new product. We can really uh, have already a program which is lasting a lot of years and are not always so dependable. Yeah, and that's all, uh, at least uh, from my side. No. Okay. Thank, yeah, thank you. you. Thank you, Karl Heinz. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Um, uh, we also need to watch the time. We have another five minutes left, um, and I would like to um, I would like to summarize also your uh, results presentation uh, with a, with a kind of um, framework uh, picture. Um, that runs into the final question, how to become a customer-centric organization, so how to implement uh, this way of thinking into an organization. Uh, and that picture here should help us in that, uh, in that question. Um, so what we found here in this, this example is uh, that we found out in a given market opportunities in that market that are described like minimize the time it takes to minimize the likelihood that these kind of outcome statements that have been evaluated as high opportunities from the viewpoint of the of the ultimate customers. Now, when you have this on the table, uh, what you do is uh, discuss it in this um, in this structured way, as I highlighted it in this table where you have all the opportunities listed and then you discuss, OK, should we address this? Yes or no? Can we do this incrementally or not? And what you want to do is you want to uh, invite people from different departments and different areas in your organization into that discussion. You can even go that far to, um, uh, to have, um, uh, to have uh, people from outside the company also joining the discussion. Uh, <laughs> level, what you want to uh, achieve here is you want to align the whole organization on these uh, validated opportunities. 
uh, and you communicated that to your marketing team um, and your marketing team can then come up with communication measures. And that will be aligned with your portfolio team and product management team. They can come up with incremental and more radical product innovations. And that then will be aligned on the same understanding of the same language of the same opportunities with the creation of digital and service innovation um, where you have a digital team most probably in your organization and they want to know how they can add, add value to the business and they will exactly uh, have a guideline uh, for that kind of discussion. And finally, you also want to use these opportunities, these scored and validated opportunities um, uh, to come up with discussions of your uh, business model um, and to discuss uh, if you probably need to come up with a new solution platform, a business model, a business model level platform uh, that gets the whole job done of the customer by combining different solutions and different services into a probably new business model. And all these kind of discussions from very incremental communication measures to very strategic creation of new business model platforms um, shall be guided by a unique common understanding of the top opportunities in a market. And these opportunities are valid and stable over time. The only thing that will change over time is, of course, the satisfaction scores in your opportunities because uh, new solutions will most probably get the job done better and that in effect will, uh, the effect will be that people are more satisfied in getting the job done. So this is what you can put on your radar then uh, to have um, customer service ongoing on a yearly basis, for example, or when you have a product launch and to find out how satisfaction scores are changing over time, uh, knowing that the underlying opportunities will stay the same, the needs will stay the same over a long period of time. So join us um, in also our other formats. There will be a big uh, uh, international summit uh, happening in Vienna um, on 25th to 26th March. We will have their industry corporations from, I would say, all over the world. Uh, Eden will be there, Borealis will be there, we will have uh, consumer goods companies, uh, most probably in the lineup like, um, uh, like Coca-Cola, uh, we will most probably have uh, Roche, Roche Diabetes Care uh, from the medical devices. Uh, we will have Marco, Maya and Co. This is a, uh, a B2B company in the window business. So you have different industries, different viewpoints and different levels of innovation uh, that these uh, speakers will share with you. Uh, and of course, there's the whole community, the whole job to be done in the ODI community from all over Europe and beyond will be present. Tony Alvik will come in from the US. We have uh, professors, uh, marketing professors there also from the US. So join us uh, for the job to be done Summit Europe. And also, of course, for all the other formats uh, that we have in the Job to be Done Institute. I'm very happy um, uh, for your interest and I would like to add something for your questions. We got um, a number of questions in the chat uh, and we have decided that we will send out an email to everybody who was in the webinar uh, listing um, those questions and giving you answers right away to those questions uh, to really get back to you and this. Um, and we would be very happy, of course, to stay in contact and also answer additional questions that you might have based on the input from today. Thank you very much from my side. Thank you very much to Karl Heinz also for sharing your um, uh, insights. And Karl Heinz, maybe you also want to say something still. Karl Heinz, you're still here? I'm still here. You can hear me. Uh, I have been on mute. So anyway, I think I also wanted to thank the audience uh, for participation and uh, for the patience, uh, uh, all the issues we had, uh, for sure, sorry for that. Uh, maybe next time uh, we will uh, do it uh, better. It, I don't know whether it's on my end or on some, somebody else's end. But anyway, so uh, I am really happy about uh, this uh, new uh, yeah, method and uh, system uh, we invented and we are applying it already since years. And I can, I can only tell you with design thinking, this is also something in, inside our company, 
it comes again back uh, because the core of design thinking is uh, the job to be done and ODI. So thank you very much. Thank you, everybody.